Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. May Gold Star, written by I Am The Hype TFS. Are you fucking insane? The muscle-bound Terrakan warlord looked at his newly seated counterpart with an expression that was equal parts terror and rage. The needle-like spines running down his thickly scaled back, vibrating audibly. It wasn't out of the ordinary for a new power to join the table and make a big declaration of intent as a show of confidence or cockiness, depending on how viable the proposal actually was. Most of the time, it was all big talk, and the senior members of this underhanded alliance talked the enthusiastic newcomer down before any real damage could be done. But this idiot had just suggested something that he clearly didn't understand the implications of. The Terracan wasn't alone in his assessment, with each of the other senior members exhibiting signs of anger or distress. The arrogant Elfian newcomer, a member of an elegant humanoid species reminiscent of what the humans called owls, seemed surprised by the response to his declaration, but his expression held no fear or trepidation, only disappointment and disapproval. Is there a need to be so uncouth Honestly, I think my proposal isn't just reasonable, but it's a necessity. Not only that, but it is something that should have been taken care of long before I ever became a member of this, uh, esteemed group. The sarcasm practically dripped from his lips at his respectful assessment of the Alliance. The contempt all but carved into his sculpted facial features. He clearly thought of the other representatives as beneath him either because he saw them as lesser than his own species, or because of how dull they have been to miss something so obvious to him. The Darakan was resisting every urge in his body to reach over and snap the Alfian's neck like a twig between his fingers. But the execution of a member had to be voted on, and it was generally not good practice to hold that vote when the member in question was in the room. Each of them held some form of insurance against the others should they meet their untimely demise during official meetings. Either files that would be sent upon death, explosives planted in their flesh, or other similar incentives to at least pretend to not want each other dead. Knowing the Alfion, it was likely the former, since the Narcissus bastards wouldn't dare intentionally mar their perfect forms, which made the Terrican want to give him a slow and messy death even more but he reigned in his temper as best he could and tried his best to be calm and reasonable. Braytel, would this uh, most uh, enlightened member like to explain what this collective has missed for you to think that this proposal to be so crucial? The Alfian knew that he was being patronized, but indulged the compliment, despite it being insincere. His father was a key member in his race's high parliament, the governing body that oversaw all of the most important decisions for the species. Because of his father's position, he had free reign over the entire sector of Alfian territory and diplomatic immunity to boot. It even granted him the title of a prince. This combined with the extremely privileged upbringing and the inflated sense of self-worth inherent in almost all Alfian created something worse than just a monster. It made one that was constantly bored and looking for amusement. This amusement came at the cost of the pain and suffering of countless others even his own kind weren't spared as he viewed himself above even his own kind, taking cruel pleasure in destroying the beauty he treasured so much in himself. The truth was that the Alfians' perfect bodies had a gift and a curse. They were capable of great feats of regeneration, to the point that it was actually quite hard to kill one of their kind if barehanded or only armed with a melee weapon. But the enhanced regeneration came with a heavy price tag. At least, they thought so. They wanted beauty. Because their bodies went into overdrive to heal an injury, they would essentially overheal, resulting in something akin to keloids, but on steroids. The injury would heal, but the site of the wound and the area immediately surrounding it would be covered in a mass of scar tissue that would only reform again, but worse if an attempt was made to remove it. An Alfian with an injury was immediately shunned by their kin and would most often flee their sex in favor of that of another race in fear of another of their kind coming to remove the wart from their community. The prince was fond of tasking his private army of heading into these other sectors and bringing back those who had fled, 
with him being of the mind that they weren't still worthy of living in Alfian space. They weren't worthy of living at all and tainting the image of his magnificent species. This was who now talked down to his elders and betters of the long-standing organization. This petulant child, who only got his spot because several members owed his father a favor, and the old man couldn't bear the constant nagging anymore. It's quite simple, my friend. The prince was cut off before he could truly begin by the sound of an activating teleporter and a flash of light as a cloaked figure appeared at a previously unoccupied chair, positioned at the head of the table they were all seated at. The figure lounged in the seat as all but the prince practically leapt to their feet or other appendages to stand at rigid attention. Why great the black market's the president? The prince went white as paper and clumsily stood up himself stuttering his way through a refrain of the group's unified chorus. This person was someone even his father would have to bow his head to, the reason this organization was able to exist at all. It was the black market that cleaned their dirty money, buried their bodies, cleaned up their messes, made everything vanish without a trace, and provided even the most obscure and theoretical of technology for enough money and with enough time. Their information network was second to none, even the Galactic Federation's combined efforts couldn't unravel it. And gods know they had tried. As far as any were aware, the current president of the black market had been in power for almost a century now, leading many to believe that they were a member of one of the longer-lived species. Though truth and fiction were interchangeable when it came to the details of the market's inner workings. The prince, for one, assumed it was an Alphian, they were long-lived and they were none better to have established an organization for such strength that it could simply laugh at the Federation's attempt to dismantle it. The shock starting to die down, his eyes suddenly widened at the epiphany. Has the President seen my proposal? For the first time in his life, he was truly afraid of the room filled with murderers intent and every warlord present shot him the same death glare, both were speaking out of turn in front of their benefactor and seeming heavenly gone behind their backs to send a proposal directly to the black market before bringing it up for discussion. I mean no disrespect. The president looked up, their face obscured by a visual disruptor, which hid their features and could induce headaches in those who stared too long. A heavily modulated voice rang out as they dismissively waved a hand. The action revealed to the prince that the cloak they wore had light-bending technology woven into it making it impossible to get a clear idea of their outline, adding to the mystery of who and what exactly they were. Ladies, gentlemen, please sit. We're all friends here. No need to be so stiff. We aren't Federation officers after all, are we? Never, sir. The warlords retook their seats, but the mood was anything but relaxed after this unexpected arrival and seemed to tease a potential spy's. I started all about, trying to read the faces of the others in questions. It seems my joke has put everyone on edge. My apologies. There's no real need to worry. If one of you was a spy, you would already be dead. I assure you, no. I'm here on most interesting of business. You see, our new friend here was indeed correct. I have to admit... I was quite surprised at the boldness when I was presented with this, uh, plan. Of course, I suppose I should have expected as much when I heard an Alfian was finally being added to your ranks. They are nothing if not confident. The reassurance erased all suspicion. If the president said there was no spy, then there wasn't. Their word was as good as law. Apprehension was replaced by the original frustration they felt about the prince's declaration and further heightened by the fact that they had lost the chance to stop this insanity from reaching the black market. The only conclusion was that the president was clearly aware that they had not signed off on this and the responsibility fell entirely on the prince's shoulders. I was a bit busy, but I did manage to move a few things around because I wanted to hear this visionary plan directly from the mouth of the originator. The modulated voice held flat down. It was impossible to tell if they truly thought the plan was good or was merely being sarcastic. But the prince only heard the compliment and proceeded to bite down on the honeyed words like a fat cop on a fisherman's bait. 
I should have known that your esteemed self would see the merits in my plan. Allow me to explain. As you know, in going over the history of this organization, I found that there have been only ever been two incidents where it was deemed necessary to remove a planet from the star maps. The first in this case was a viral outbreak in RE1. After, containment was breached, which could have led to the potentially galaxy-wide disaster. And the second, to destroy the heart of a burgeoning rival organization that dared to threaten the authority of the warlords. I propose that we have a reason to do this for a third time. Of all the elements in the Federation that threaten to continue success of this alliance, humanity is the greatest. Their technology advances by leaps and bounds with almost unnatural speed, and in time, I fear they may grow to be the only real threat that we could ever face. So I propose we strike at humanity's heart, destroy Earth, and cripple them as a race and a civilization. The prince preened and smiled as the president simply nodded along, listening to a short but rather impactful suggestion. I see, I see. So you looked into the history of the Alliance in an effort to think of a worthy first proposal. A smart decision, it has to be said, but I wonder if I might ask a question. Of course, I am glad to answer any question of our most generous benefactor. Hmm. Anyway, while you were looking through the records, did you find any mention of any of our your counterparts targeting human operations? I did not, which I must admit I find quite odd. Ah, you did. I am happy to hear it. So, did you ask any of the senior members why that was? I... Actually, actually, I think it might be better if you don't speak anymore. I'm sure I can get a handle on what exactly happened, and what went on in that arrogant little brain of yours. So you realized it was an odd... But instead of asking the other members, who you view as lesser than yourself, you merely assumed it was the result of cowardice or oversight due to stupidity. Being an Elfian, you never bothered to delve into the details of other races, because why would that be worth even a moment of your time? Which means that what little you do know about humanity means that you thought that they were a young, fresh-faced race with a talent for technology and not much else. After all, they aren't Ulfian, so they can't be all that impressive. Because of this, you failed to learn about the fact that humans are one of the single most brutal races in the galaxy. But it, to be fair, they haven't shown that side of themselves in a while. Let's say you could be forgiven for not knowing that off the top of your head, and you decided to proceed with your plan. You stopped right there and sent it my way. But had you done any real investigation into what you were proposing, you would have discovered quite a large flaw. Humans are vengeful, and the word to describe the degree to which they will go to enact that vengeance or even the smallest of perceived slights, does not exist. And yet, you propose to destroy their heart, their homeworld, their biggest, brightest jewel in their crown. If you had used what little intelligence you had left after spending the majority of your life drinking, pecking, and torturing your own people, you might have learned that humans value their culture above all else. It is their identity, the soul of their civilization. And, like many other race, they would cry out in anguish, weep, and lament at the loss of their most precious of jewels. But even while they weep, their hands would assemble weapons of war. Their minds would push all focus into finding the ones responsible. Their hearts would thirst for blood and their entire race would make it their life's mission to return that anguish a hundredfold. Even through the modulation of the president's voice was ice cold. Each word spat out like venom as they picked apart this idiotic idea. And when they were about halfway done, they rose from their chair and started making their way over to the prince. By the time they finished and stood in front of the fledgling warlord, the prince had sunk down in his chair, shivering and pale with fear. 
wishing there was a hole that he could crow crawl into and hide from this entity before him. You thought that destroying Earth would destroy humanity's heart. You precious little idiot. Do not confuse the anatomy of the human body with that of the human psyche. Every planet under their control is another heart. Even if Earth is the first, its loss would not kill them. We, and by we, I mean you, and the others here are burdened with your presence. Do not touch humanity, because we do not want to draw their attention. Because of all the crap that came out of your petty little mouth, you got one thing right. Humanity has every potential to be the worst nightmare and only true threat. So we avoid them. We take advantage of their frankly insane ability to make advances in technology and use them for our own ends while being very careful not to make big enough waves to rock their boat. An undisturbed humanity is a docile creature. A provoked humanity is a fucking apocalypse. The president bent down so their face was mere inches away from the prince's and grabbed his chin to force him to look up at him. Tears began to form at the corner of the Alphian's eyes, and his head began to pound from the effects of staring at the visual disruptor. Do you know what this is for me, really? This little alliance? Daycare. This is how I keep you and the other little children busy and entertained while I and your parents and cousins and aunts and uncles or whatever other relatives who made it so all of you could have this authority and power do real work. These declarations and plans you sent me, class projects, you do little drawings with the rest of the children and put it on my desk, and I pat you on the head, give you a gold star, you did a good job. Not once since the founding of this group have I had to explain this, because until now, every new member has had the bare minimum of intelligence to understand what this was. But here you are to break the streak. So until I decide otherwise, I'm putting you in a timeout. You will not be allowed back into the playroom. You will not be allowed to participate in the group activities. You will not be allowed to talk to the other children outside of the playroom. You will stay home and think about what you've done. And you will never do it again. And when I allow you to come back, you will not do any solo projects. You will run all of your ideas by the other children and work together on your little drawing before giving it to me. Then I will pat you on the head and give you a gold star. Do you understand, little boy? The prince nodded frantically in the president's grip, tears pouring down his face and his head screaming in agony, too scared to utter a single word. Good boy, now run along. The prince had never moved more quickly or ungracefully as he did once the president released their grip, scrambling away and fleeing out of the room practically on all fours to get away. The president simply watched until he was gone and turned to the rest of the warlords, none of whom had the courage to even look in their direction. Letting out a modulated sound of disgust, they activated the teleporter once more with a whisk them away. Class dismissed! End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.